Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Gaming on Caffeine. My name is Isaac, and we are back playing some Feed the Beast Infinity for episode 24. And at the end of last episode, I said that between episodes, I was going to go ahead and finish up all of the auto-crafting recipes so that at the start of this episode, we should be able to auto-craft a geothermal generator. And guess what? I've gone ahead and done it. So if we were to go ahead and look in all of these ME interfaces now, they all have all of the stuff that we need, apart from this one, which has absolutely nothing. Uh, they all have the stuff that we need in order to craft some geothermal generators. I've also gone ahead and taught it how to craft this guy over here, the electric engine from, I believe it's forestry, I think. And we'll kind of get to why I've got that electric, this one over here. Do, 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 up here. Uh, yep, it's from Forestry. And we'll get to why I've got that engine on Autocraft a little later on in the episode. But for the time being, the first thing that I want to do today is test this thing out. So Geothermal, you can see it says Craft if we were to say Craft 9. And again, I'll tell you why we're crafting 9 in just a second. But if we were to do that, click Next, you can see that it says all of the items are available or available to craft. And we have just enough CPU space at the top there, 995 bytes used. And basically what this means, by the way, the bytes, is what size crafting storage you have. If you went over, I think it's 1024 bytes, then this 1K crafting storage wouldn't be enough. And we'd either have to upgrade it to a 4K crafting storage or add another 1K crafting storage to the system somewhere. But for now, we are more than fine with the 1K that we have. So we should be able to click next and then start. And it should just start doing stuff. I've gone ahead and moved all of the overclockers from here and here between these machines. However, I don't really think we need any in there. So I'm going to go ahead and just move some of those like this. And that should speed things up. You can see it's going ahead and it's going <laughs> to... My gosh. This is going to use so much iron. I didn't even check how much iron that was going to use. It's, it's crafting 64 of these iron plates. So it's going to use a lot of iron. But it's going to do its thing. It's going to start. It's going to work its way through it. And then once this is done, we'll start working on the electric engines. Now, the reason why I'm getting the electric engines is because they can convert from EU to Redstone Flux, which is flipping amazing. And again, I have no idea how I've played Minecraft for this long and didn't know that the electric engine could convert uh, EU into either Minecraft Jewels or Redstone Flux. So... What we're going to do is I've set up this new room over here. As you can see, we're going to have some geothermal generators on this side of the room here. And then in front of them, we're going to have a line of copper cables to bring the, the power out of the geothermal generators and into the electric engines, which are then going to go to some conduits and then into an energy cell of some kind. Now, one little caveat is that the electric engine, by default, electric engine, can only transfer about 20 redstone flux per tick. Now, the conversion rate between EU and RF in the, electron, uh, in the electric engine is about 1 to 4. So 1 EU equals 4 RF. So that means that each electric engine by default will only be able to accept 5 EU, which is not great considering each one of these 9, even 10, because remember we have one down here, which I am going to move in a second actually. This guy over here, we're going to move him. So we have 10 geothermal generators. And if we needed, if each one of those produces 20 EU per tick, which it does when provided with full amounts of lava, and then we try and power those into the electric engines, which can only accept 5 EU per tick at the max. We are going to need a ton of those electric engines. And I do really, really, really don't feel like making that many electric engines. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to make some stuff that allows us to upgrade those electric engines to consume more EU per tick and therefore transfer it to more redstone flux. And to do that, we are going to need a couple of things. The first thing that we are going to need is something that I think we mentioned in the B episode, but never got around to making. And that is the thermionic fabricator. This thing is fairly easy to make if you happen to have a sturdy casing, which we do because we have a ton of bronze, which is very nice indeed, and a chest like so, and you can make yourself the thermionic fabricator. Nice. And for the time being, I think I'm going to put this right about here because we're not really using the squeezer right now. So I'm going to put it there. And I'm going to get rid of this pipe because we also don't need that. And basically, what we're going to use this for is making something known as a bronze electron tube. Now, the bronze electron tube, there are multiple different electron tubes. In fact, if I go ahead and just type in electron tube, you'll see all the electron tubes that come up. There's quite a few of them, uh, all from forestry, and they all have different effects on the machines that you put them in. We're going to use the bronze electron tube because if we put two bronze electron tubes onto a circuit and then put that circuit into an electric engine, it increases the amount of redstone flux that it can transfer to 100 redstone flux per tick, which is like five times as much as it could do before which is a lot better than the 20 and it means we need a lot fewer electric engines in the long term so 
in order to make this thing, we simply need to put some glass into here, which is then going to instantly melt down into liquid glass. And then we just need this recipe, which is just a bunch of bronze or Tinker's alloys and two redstone. And we should be good to go. So let's grab some bronze of which we have a lot because we accidentally made far too much last time we did this we'll take you and we'll take either some glass or some sand now we do have quite a bit of glass so i'm just gonna take that for the time being and we're gonna throw it in here like so there we go fills up with liquid glass and then all we need to do again it's the same as all of the other forestry machines you put the uh, recipe in here and then the items in this little slot down here and it's gonna go ahead and make us a bunch of these so we can just go ahead and start taking these out do 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 and we are going to need uh 16 is what we're going to need now i've actually made far too many but that's fine we uh they're not going to go and miss really in the long term and then all we need after that is a circuit to put these on now the circuit we're going to make is this guy here the enhanced circuit board and i'm kind of really hoping that this is the right one i haven't really tested that this one uh, i've been using some of the higher tier ones but i think the enhanced circuit board will work so bear with me here we're going to try and see if we can work this out so we just need some water in the carpet to relay with redstone and tinker's alloys and we should be good to go so again let's throw let's get rid of you and then just put bronze in the middle and then redstone along the outside <laughs> let's see if this works so one two three four five six you can go there you can go there we should probably at some point hook up an unlimited water source to that carpenter because it does use an awful lot of water uh, to make all of its stuff but we could just go ahead and grab two of you throw you into the carpenter like so and like so and that should start to make the uh, the circuit that we need now we are going to need a few of these but for now we can just make one to kind of show you how it works and there we go it made the enhanced circuit board we'll take that we'll let it work away and make some more stuff and now in order to get the uh, the electron tubes onto the circuit board we need what's called a soldering iron or a soldering iron or whatever right? i think it's pronounced differently uh, across the pond so i'm not gonna get into it but to make this we just need some iron and another bronze and we can do that again in the carpenter so we'll go ahead and take a few more of the iron that we have, which is running low, actually, considering we made so many of those geothermal generators. Let's get rid of this recipe, take you out, and replace it with one that looks a little bit like this, I think it was. And again, we need a little tiny wee bit more water, which should be fine. Boom. And that should get us a, uh, that should get us a soldering iron, possibly. I think it should. And then we're going to see if we can put these bronze electron tubes onto this circuit, which I think we should be able to, but not 100% sure. So let's give it a try. We're going to right click with the soldering iron. We're going to put an enhanced circuit board in here. We're then going to add two electron tubes, like so. One, two. And did that work? It did. It got two electron tubes. And you can see it increases output by 40 redstone flux per tick, which means if we have two of those on, which we do, it should increase it by 80, which will increase the amount that the electric engine can transfer from 20 EU per tick. Sorry, 20 redstone flux per tick to 100 redstone flux per tick. Now, let's see. How are we doing on the geothermal generators? We have one. Brilliant. <laughs> that is absolutely brilliant. What are we missing? I think we should have a recipe in here, although... Wait, what? That's in the wrong place, isn't it? Yes. We may have messed up there. Hmm. Okay, let's uh, let's cancel that. I think I put that in the wrong slot because that should not have gone in there. Let's cancel that. Let's take all of you out of there. And let's. all we have to do is just start it again. It should work just fine. So geothermal. Let's take one of you and request eight more. Also, I did notice in the comment section, uh, I specified, like, really highly specified, not to make the mistake of making, of telling it that one tin plate equaled one tin cell. And I completely messed it up, and I did it anyway in the episode. But make sure you do make sure that it says three empty cells per one tin plate. Otherwise, it just won't work, and, and you're going to regret it. But that should go ahead and start working on stuff. We'll probably have an abundance of tin plates right now now actually we don't uh because of all those uh, all those cables and stuff but what i'm gonna do guys is i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna wait here for this thing to finish i'm then gonna request that it make oh look it's making stuff i'm then gonna request that it make a bunch of electric engines i'm gonna say eight because we've got 10 of the uh, the geothermal generators each producing 20 eu per tick so total uh, with 10 of them that would be 200 eu per tick then times that by four to get 800 redstone flux per tick and then seeing as the uh, electric engines with these upgrades can do 100 redstone flux per tick we're gonna need eight of those so i'm gonna go away guys i'm gonna come back in a second when we have 10 geothermal
electrical generators and eight electric engines and i'll see you in a second okay so a little while later and we have ourselves 10 geothermal generators and eight electric engines so now what we have to do is set these things up so i think the middle is round about here so we're gonna have one two three four five on this side and then one two three four five on that side to kind of make it a little bit symmetrical and then over here we're going to have ourselves some electric engines. Now, in order to have them go down the right way, because right now they're going to go down and face the wrong way, which is really annoying. Not quite sure why they do it. But if we want them to face the right way, the easiest way to get them to do it is to just put down the conduits and they will just automatically spin around and face the conduits that are already there. So... What I've gone ahead and done is got some already stabilized redstone and made a couple more of these redstone energy flux ducts. So, if we were to do something like this and put them down around about here, like so, we'll get rid of you for a second and put that down like that, we should now be able to put these down and have them face the right way. Nice! There we go. And we made a few too many and I do need to move one over if I want this to be symmetrical, but that's fine. We'll get rid of you. And we'll get rid of you. And that should be all good. And then one of the final two things that we need to do is get all the lava to these generators. And then we need a way to get the power out of the generators into the electric engines. Now, we could probably, possibly get away with using the copper cables that we've been using up till now. Because the power is simply going from here to here. However, there is a chance that the cables would break. Because each of these are producing 20 EU per tick. Uh, if you look at the top there, it does tell you how much they produce in Whaler. But the fact that we have 10 of them. Them, means that they will be producing 200 EU per take and therefore the copper cables that can only handle 128 EU per take might not be enough now like I said it's only going over this one gap and it's not really all going down the line so we could probably get away to it but just to be on the safe side we're going to go ahead and make some of the more expensive cables from industrial craft that can carry more EU per take so if we go ahead and type in industrial craft industrial craft uh, I'm not super bad at spelling by the way my keyboard is behind the microphone i can't see any of it which is why it's terrible when i'm trying to type like this but we should be able to find some copper not copper we should be able to find some gold cable which can transfer 512 eu per tick and as you may have guessed the way that we get gold cable is simply by grabbing ourselves some gold ingots using the hammer like so get a couple of those get ourselves the cutters which i think we still have we do. We can go ahead and cut those up into cable. And then we just simply go ahead and use some rubber to insulate those cables. And we are good to go. So rubber. Uh, you can either use mine factory reloaded rubber or... Um, the, ah, okay. Okay. You can either use MFR rubber or industrial craft rubber. However, for the gold cables, you need two rubber per cable in order for it to work. So it looks like we may, in fact, need just a little bit more rubber in order for this to work. So let's go ahead and take a little bit of a sleep. And then in the morning, we can go ahead and get ourselves some more rubber, smelt it up, and we should be able to make ourselves some insulated gold cables. And once we've got 10 of those, we can go ahead and hook them all up like so. You'll see that they do connect to both sides, showing that the electric engine does accept the EU from industrial craft. And now the final piece of this puzzle is to get the lava hooked up and running. So all we need to do for that is to grab this guy real quick, which I think we can do with our wrench. And apparently I am completely wrong with that. We cannot do it with our wrench. It must be done with a pickaxe of some kind. I'm also going to go ahead and take this. And then all we need after that is a few more fluid ducts, which, look at that, I've gone ahead and prepared already. And now we should be good to go. So what we're going to do, actually, before we do this, I do want to kind of explain something here. The electric engines will explode or will i think they just stop working i think in older versions they will have exploded but in newer versions i think they stop working if they have too much power in them that they can't send anywhere so you have to make sure that there is a source for all of this power to go to so in this case we need some kind of energy cell to accept all of the power coming from our uh, our geothermal generators and to do that we're going to go ahead and make ourselves I think a redstone energy cell because the redstone energy cell is very similar to the energy cell that we have over there but better so let's have a look redstone energy cell this guy over here it's pretty hard to make does require some invar some lead and a conductor's coil they're not really the hard parts the hard parts come in the form of the redstone energy cell frame which is in the fluid transposer with something like this so we're gonna need a little bit more obsidian dust and some lead 
to get ourselves a little bit hard in glass. And this should be fairly easy. We have pretty much everything we need uh, to get this to work. What do we have? We have 2,200 miller buckets of destabilized redstone in there. So that's more than enough to get this thing filled up. I think it only requires... Oh, no, it requires 4,000. Wow, okay. That's nowhere near enough to get this thing filled up. So instead, what we're going to have to do is grab a little bit more redstone. And throw more of that into the uh, magma crucible over here. That that should be more than enough. I like that should be loads. And uh, we'll take all that stuff. We'll start to move this back into here once we get enough in the tank. There we go. And we'll put you in. Make sure it's toggled to fill so that all of the stuff goes into the internal tank. And then we'll grab one more bucket's worth. Like so, I'm going to leave this running because we always need more destabilized redstone at some point or another. Throw that in there. That should go ahead and deposit it. While it's doing that, let's go ahead and make the frame like so. Take you, fill you up with 4,000 miller buckets of resonant redstone. Not resonant redstone, of a destabilized redstone, which is probably going to take a little while. So, while that's doing that, let's go ahead and hook up most of these fluid conduits. And then we should be good to go. Now, there's probably a lot of people thinking, Isaac, why in the world have you even bothered with this? This was like the longest way to possibly do anything ever. And uh, considering that it's a 1 to 4 transfer from EU to Redstone Flux, these geothermal generators are kind of producing about 80 Redstone Flux per take. Which, for those who are familiar with thermal expansion, is the exact same as the Magmatic Dynamo, which doesn't require any of this stuff over here, and is much, much easier to set up. So why have I bothered with this? Well, the reason that I have bothered with this imaginary person that I've made up in my head is because this is kind of just a proof of concept the fact that we can turn eu into rf and what we'll do later on in the series is when we require more power instead of just adding more geothermal generators because that's kind of boring we'll go for the bigger stuff in industrial craft like the nuclear reactors and so on and so forth and the solar panels which i've had a ton of people asking me to get in so we'll get into all of that kind of stuff and we'll be able to transfer them into redstone flux so that for once we can start using some industrial craft for power instead of using things like big reactors or thermal expansion which i used in every series that i've ever done ever and i like to mix things up every now and again so that's kind of my little rant over there we can go ahead and throw you back in get ourselves a redstone energy cell which can hold up to 20 million redstone flux and transfer 8,000 redstone flux per tick in and out which is more than enough for all of this stuff here which is going to produce about 800 redstone flux per tick so about as much as our big reactor so we are kind of doubling the amount of redstone flux that our like base is producing right now and then the final piece of this puzzle is to stick you there put that on the bottom stick you somewhere i'm gonna use this one so we don't have to use a redstone signal and then we're gonna set it to ignore and that's gonna fill all these up they start producing lava and the final thing that we need in order to get the uh, engines up and running is a redstone signal so what i'm thinking about doing is something like this i'm thinking of getting some covers some levers and seeing if this works like so if we put say a cover i want it there and then a lever there does that work? It does. Nice. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we're just going to go ahead and put a bunch of these all the way along here. I might change which cover we use at, uh, at some point in the future, but this works for now. And to be fair, we could probably use uh, some red alloy wire instead to make it so there was just one lever for all of this stuff. But instead, this kind of works. So look at that. We're getting red stuff flux already. That is flipping awesome. Let's quickly grab our saw and do a little bit more of this cobblestone from chisel. Cobblestone from chisel. One, two, and then we'll just go you in there. Shift, left, click, grab all that. Shift, left, click, grab all that. That is more than enough. Uh, I might even... Nah, we don't really need that there, do we? We'll get rid of you. Thank you very much. You have served your time. Those are flickering. Those are running... Ooh. Are we running out of lava? I don't think we should be running out of lava. Ooh. That's not good. That's not good at all. Oh, they've got too much power. Oh, they've got too much power. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, that makes sense. I know why. I know why. Because I've completely forgotten to stick the electron tubes in. Because if we look right now, 20 redstone flux per tick. So these are providing more power than these can consume. And these are getting backed up with power and stopping. And all we have to do to fix that is I went ahead and made all of these. So just one at a time, we can just go and put those into here. That should up it to 100 redstone flux per tick. And if we go ahead and just stick one of those into each of these, they should go ahead and up the amount of redstone flux that we are, being, that we are creating. Uh, at which point we should be making a ton of stuff and we'll probably fill this thing up pretty flipping quickly which is kind of awesome you also notice that the ones that we don't have these in were turning kind of yellow and are getting really hot at which point they were kind of going to stop because they had too much power but we should be able to fix that by throwing all of these in like so boom 
And look at this. Look at this. We're producing a ton of redstone flux for our energy cell, which is awesome. Just close to a thousand redstone flux per tick. And all of these should now be given a run for their money. Yeah, look at that. They're all running out of, uh, of, of, of power, which is kind of awesome. And this is our setup. If we want to, we could add another one exactly like this on the opposite, which I think I might do. I might just mirror this on the other side so that we have like an extra 800 redstone flux per tick being produced on this side. And then one last thing that I want to do this episode that's not at all related to this. And by the way, I might do that between episodes. So just go and add a second side to this. One last thing that I want to do with this episode in preparation for next episode is set up a QED. So the QED is something from Extra Utilities. It's this guy over here, and it's quite awesome. It changes its name every so often. It changes what QED stands for. Right now, it stands for Quad Erat Demonstradum. Uh, but if we wait a while and look back again, it changes its quantum ender device. And it even does this whilst it's placed down. Fairly easy to make. It just requires a bunch of this stuff, which is fairly easy to make if you happen to have a bunch of ender pearls and obsidian lying around. If you don't, then it's a bit more tricky. But for us, it should be fine. We'll throw you in there. Grab a few of those. Get ourselves the diamond encrusted stuff, which does require some more burnt quartz, which we never seem to have. But I did go mining into the nether between episodes, so we do have some quartz. So let's take you one, two, three three and four and for the time being i'm going to throw you into this guy because that should go ahead and just instantly dump it into the a system which would be very nice indeed what we should probably do is hook some of this stuff up to our machines in here because we are kind of running out of power with all of the overclockers in i know this guy here the metal farmer was kind of struggling to to process all of those iron plates when it had three overclockers in that's why i've taken one out for the time being so we should probably go ahead and make some geothermal generators for this as well but we'll work on that between episodes for now let's go ahead and grab ourselves a diamond encrusted computer matrix and then combine that up with a crafting table and two eyes of ender which are just uh, ender pearls and a blaze powder and get ourselves a qed nice and then finally to power the qed we need ender dash flux crystals these guys over here these are made using some more ender infused obsidian and some more of those eyes of ender so i'm gonna go ahead and just make a couple more with those and we'll make this six like this and like this. We'll make as many as we can, I guess, actually. Five. I want to make six. We're going to go ahead and make one more like so. The more of these you have, the faster it will work. And this doesn't run on redstone flux. This runs on basically end of flux crystals. It's kind of a weird system. But the way that this is going to work, and I'm going to put it on the wall because I kind of like uh, having it on the wall here. I'm going to put it there. And we're going to have crystal. Oh, this is going to be annoying. Crystal. Crystal. I kind of like them ha having them flat. Actually, yeah. Okay, get, get down here. I'll put it there and there. But basically, this thing is used to make certain recipes in uh, in extra utilities. For example, remember last episode when I said I wanted to set up a quarry that was going to be massive, like absolutely huge. Well, I really do. I, I want to do that. But I don't want to have to set up a thousand by a thousand fence parameter in whatever dimension I choose to make it in. So instead of setting up a massive amount of fences, what we can do instead is make ourselves what's known as an ender marker. And then for those who are familiar with the Buildcraft quarry and the way that the markers work in that, it's pretty much the exact same. All we have to do is put an ender marker down in each of the four corners, make it a thousand by a thousand square, and that will just auto connect and the quarry will work just fine. And the way that we make ender markers... Uh, and what are they called? Ender markers? Marker? Ender? I have no idea what they're called. Let's see if we can find them here. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. These ones here, ender dash marker. That's why I couldn't find them. These are made in the QED using some ender infused obsidian and some ender pearls. Of course, we need a ton of this ender infused obsidian, but we'll grab you and you for the time being just to kind of show how this works. And depending on how many of these flux crystals you have around it, depends on how fast it will work. So we should get pretty fast speeds with the amount that we have now. So kind of see it makes that nice noise. All of the purple stuff flies towards it. And it's going to go ahead and make us an ender marker. So what I'll do between this episode and next is make four more of these. And at the start of next episode, we'll try to find the new dimension and uh, set all these up. So we have a massive coil running. We'll hook this up to the power system so that it's getting power from both our geothermal generators and our big reactor. So it's getting about mm, close to 2,000 uh, redstone flux per tick powering the coil, which should make it go super fast. We can also throw some speed, uh, speed upgrades onto the coil as well to make it Run even faster and devour even more power but for now guys thanks for watching if you did enjoy the video be sure to hit like and i will see you next time